the most iconic voices in golf are back to save the day and ready to entertain in their newly weekly video podcast. Costas and McCord off their rocker. You found it. It's Costas and McCord off their rockers, your new favorite golf show. We've got a great one for you today. A little Ryder Cup preview. Yep, I've got the uh, 2021. Well, it was 2020. Then COVID made it 2021. Ryder Cup from Whistling Straits is his Team USA outfit. Peter and Gary are going to be with us in just a second. They're going to give you their thoughts on the Ryder Cup, their picks for the Ryder Cup, both teams and, of course, uh, who's going to be uh, the top point getters for the European side and the American side. We've got a great tip from Peter, Coach Costas, will help your game. And we've got Peter and Gary playing the 15th hole, the par five at the upper course at their club, Whisper Rock in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, some good stories, some good golf, a lot of fun. We really appreciate you watching the show. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with your golf friends. And hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode of Costas and McCord Off Their Rockers. We want to thank our great sponsors, Swing You and the Swing You app, Bono's Barbecue, great barbecue sauces, great barbecue, and a great franchising opportunity. We've got Foresight Sports, their Quad Pro, their GC3, their incredible sim in a box. Their simulators are second to none, really fantastic. And thanks to CMC Design. They do some incredible head covers, gifts, everything for tournaments and for golfers directly. Lots of fun stuff. And you can get more information at cmcdesign.com. Send us your swing on video to costasmccord at gmail.com. We're going to get to some of those in the next upcoming episodes. But let's get started. Peter and Gary, it is kind of the end of the golf season. And uh, of course, we've had FedEx Cup. We've got a lot going on, but we have we have Ryder Cup. It's from Marco Simone Golf Course. It's in Italy, outside of Rome. Peter and Gary, hope your guys' summer has been going well. And uh, Peter, why don't you just kick us off? Because you've been uh, for many years. You were coaching Paul Casey at Ryder Cups. Give us a little insight on how this stuff goes at the Ryder Cup. What it's what it's going to be like and. Gosh, it's in the middle of the night for most of us to watch this coming up. Yeah, it's going to be difficult TV watching, but uh, Ryder Cup is special. I mean, it's it's it used to be, in my opinion, more special when the European Tour and the U.S. Tour were more or less separated, because this was the coming together of the best players from both tours, um, and and uh, it took a while for Europe to overcome that feeling of. Uh, inadequacy against the U.S. team. But now, you know, it's kind of like they're so familiar with each other. They're all friends. It's it's a little less uh, electric in that sense from my perspective. Uh, the last one I went to was Paris. Uh, it was spectacular. I have never seen crowds like that. I don't know what's going to happen in Rome. I do know the, the golf course, Marco Simone, is, is a miserable walk. I mean, it is really difficult. Um, walking. And so it's going to be interesting to see what happens to the players uh, who have to go all five matches. I think that's going to be a, a strategy that the, the coach is going to have to look into. Gary, uh, you're a little under the weather. You're playing uh, You're playing a little bit uh, hurt, aren't you, this this morning? I, I just got back from areas near Marco Simone in uh, Italy. I was in Portugal and Spain for two weeks, uh, mainly at bars. And um, uh, I just got back yesterday, so I have no idea what time it is. None. Zero. I know what time it is. Um, yeah, just to, Peter, to, to kind of to agree with you on that, and Marcus Simone, I, 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 we talked to a couple of guys, and I, I found one guy that likes it. it. It's one of those, oh, if we had to play metal play, I don't like the golf course. But match play, it's going to be okay, which means uh, they think the golf course is a piece of shit. Um, that's golf talk. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's a hilly walk, a lot of blind holes, the back nine, which is kind of fun. You've got two drivable par fours and the last hole is a par five. That's kind of, it winds around and, and the big hitters be able to get there. So 
it, it is kind of for match play, especially the back nine when it kind of gets, you know, everybody starts getting hungry on the back nine. And uh, it, it should be interesting. They say the weather is going to be uh, hot, but I just looked and it's like 83 every day. So that'll be fine. Um, uh, Peter, going along with your deal, again, I've never heard this before. They're talking about having caddies platooned because they're not going to be able to walk 36 holes a day. Um, they have gone, they have designed lighter golf bags, like carry bags for the caddies. Never heard of that, ever. I mean, we had, you know, we've walked Kapalua, which is a hard walk. I caddied at, um, I caddied at Castle Pines, which will knock your socks off going up and down those hills at 7,000 feet. I caddied in the tournament there. Uh, that's a hard walk. And I can't, you know, these guys know hard walks and they keep coming back with, well, you know, we might not be able to play all of our guys consistently through the deal. We don't have to set guys down, which I find BS too, because they're really loaded. I believe the Europeans at the top of the of the uh, at the top of their uh, their team. They got what three three of the top four guys on the world golf rankings. So you got to think, Peter, they're going to be playing those guys as much as they can. I don't think tired is going to be part of the vernacular or part of the part of the landscape when they they go play there this is a Ryder cup as you know they can't nobody can breathe in a Ryder cup yeah and and, and to follow up with what you were saying the 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 hoodie that you're wearing from beth page black um when we did the pga there i was walking that golf course and of course we don't always get to walk down the middle of the fairway we have to walk on the sides <laughs> And it was miserable. It's a miserable walk in the rough. I can't imagine what the spectators are going to go through at this golf course trying to get around and follow groups. It's going to be brutal, uh, especially if it's really, really warm. But it's going to be interesting. I think the, the one thing about the golf course, although the, the, there are not many fans of it, I think it could lead to a lot more strategy involved, right, from the captains and and. Sure. The assistant captains to, to try and figure this thing out, because you're right, Gary, uh, Europe is is top heavy. I mean, they're really good up up front. Now we got to look at their rookies and their first first timers and, and see what's going to happen with them. Uh, but you're not going to be able to hide players, I don't think. I think you're going to have to. It's going to be a 12 man competition on each side because of fatigue and, and difficulty of the golf course. When, when you look at both teams. You look at both teams, and you, the first thing you look for is you, you look, how's Vegas betting on this, or Phil? Um, and, you know, you can find out. The and, uh, and, well, that was just a segue. Uh, I read the book, by the way. You guys read, read the book, uh, Billy's book? Walters? I haven't read it yet. Read it. I, I, that's what I did going back and forth across to, the, uh, to Europe. Um, interesting, very interesting. Um, I'd like to apply. I would like to apply his. Peter, did you did you, did you understand his uh, the, the the math of how he does this thing, Billy Walters? That was it, extraordinary. It, yeah, I had to reread it to to get it, but I got it eventually. God, it's it amazing. Um, anyway, we're we're pretty much favorites across the board of all the the all the boys in Vegas, anywhere from. Minus one ten to minus one twenty five. I saw all the way up. Yeah, uh, and yeah, they're small favorite. You know, again, against us winning over there, which we haven't done in thirty years. Uh, so, how do you see it, money wise? If you're going to the window, um, what are you, are you gonna you're gonna plunk down at minus one twenty? You're gonna plunk down for the U.S. or are you gonna take the other side? I'm taking the other side. I, you know, I, I will tell you. I will tell you right now. I'm going. I'm going with Team Europe. Oh, look at that. Where did you get that? I am. I, I am. Uh, I am. Are you on again? He's a traitor. I, so, so <laughs> no, this is, this Think is what, like when I was in Paris working with Paul, I'm obviously on the European side. And, uh, and they, so I walk in the locker room and they all look at me like I'm some kind of, you know, enemy. And I said, no, 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 boys, I'm Greek for a week. You know, so I'm European for a week. That's great. You're European for a week. So you're going to go yeah. outside and take the cash. Okay. Yeah. All right. I don't, I don't disagree with that. Um, somehow those numbers get a little confusing uh, for the Ryder Cup because it's 
that's when the really the heart comes out. And and uh, I mean, those guys have been fantastic on their own soil. 1993 was the last time we won. <laughs> yeah, 1993. Over there, that's hey Gary, do you there. think do you think there's going to be anything or and and Peter, um, any loss from the European team as far as maybe they're obviously they've got some phenomenal players, especially Rom and McRoy up front, but um, losing guys like Sergio Garcia and Ian Poulter, who kind of been the heart of that team for all those years that we've gotten beat on their soil do you think that's that's going to hurt them at all uh in the team room and and the emotional side well i first of all i don't think I, they were playing over here full time i don't think they'd have made the team anyway i mean they're they're going to be geezer like over there so yeah. this it's a time for you know that these these new kids uh sap streck uh, uh um aberg who looks phenomenal um, uh, Hoygaard, uh, I mean, they, they've got, they've got some serious power. Well, of course, in Victor Hover. And, and coming up, but again, they're rookies. So you don't know when they tee it up, you know, and the music starts, they, you don't know what's going to happen, but they're really good players and really solid. And that they need, I, in my opinion, they needed Sergio's older Poulter. I, 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 those guys, other than the heartbeat of the team. And helping that through that, I I don't think they'd even made it. I really I really don't. I, these two these kids that are coming up now are really really good, really good for their son. Well, I will say this, Gary, um, and and this is my my parting shot at Jay Monahan and and Keith Kelly. <laughs> I think the way they've handled this whole thing with Live Golf has been complete bullshit. Um, I watched the interview that Brett Bear did the other night with. Uh, Mohammed bin Salman. And if you if you believe what he said, then it really isn't sports washing. It's 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 the it's the revolutionizing of his country and, and getting a path forward for them to be economically stable. So I, I see no reason why they shouldn't be involved in sport. But when you went all bombastic off the beginning and you get all these players that can't play, can't participate, can't qualify, the first thing that's gonna happen. Whichever side loses is going to say we'd have won if we had the live players. I don't care which side it is. You know, <laughs> if we'd have had Dustin Johnson, we'd have won. If if we'd have had uh, Sergio Garcia, we'd have won. So th- there's a little bit of a there's a little bit of a pall cast over this for me because because of that. Who would Peter I, while I, you're I, on that live player? I mean, that's going to be inevitable um, for the. For the years to come, uh, not knowing what's going on with a merger, or with a, no one knows what's going on in this deal. So, you, you, your team is who you've got, and let's go forward. Let's try to get this thing done. And uh, and again, I find it, I find it with all the firepower, right? it's amazing, Peter. That you know, you and I did was it 1989 the Ryder Cup over there? Yep, 1989 at the Belfry. I, yeah, at the Belfry. That's when I knew, uh, Mike, when I remember, you know, you, you play tournaments and you see majors and you see how guys react. Yeah. That tournament and that, that year, 1989, I've never seen these guys that wide-eyed in my life. In any major, coming down the Different. end, this, her eyes were continually open and it was creepy. And uh, that's when I got the first real feel of Ryder Cup, we, you know, it was a competition and we were kind of beating them until they kind of, we went all European over there and then it got kind of fun. But it's, you know, you think it's like we were saying, it, it's guys from Florida playing guys from Florida and it wasn't really that big a deal. But boy, you get there up close and personal and watch these guys choking their guts out. And it's, it, it is something. It is, it's the, I believe it, it's a preeminent uh, golf event. Peter, do you agree with that in, in the world? I you think, think this is the one if you, you just put them in a big pot and you got number one pick for your television station, what term would you pick? Yeah, no, it, it, it would be, it would be the Ryder cup. I mean, you got Sunday afternoon of a major, right? That's, that's pressure. No question about it. But in the Ryder cup, you've got that pressure. Every single match, every single match is like Sunday afternoon in a major. Uh, and, and on top of that, you're not only trying to play for yourself, you're trying to play for your team, which which doubles the pressure. And it's funny, the difference between the pros and the amateurs, 
when amateurs play a team event, they relax because they figure if they screw up, their partner will carry them through. You when pros don't play a team don't event, it. it's the other way around. They, they put extra pressure on themselves because they don't want to let their partner down. Yeah. So, so it's I, a I, master class in strategy for me. It, it, you know, I, I, to me, one of the one of the things that was quite obvious on on the texture of this whole thing and how the players react to it was la- the last that was a twenty one at, at Whistling Straits when we beat them by ten, and they did the interview with Rory, and he was crying his eyes out about it, and I went, "What the hell? Are you kidding?" And he was he was going nuts over the fact that they were getting beat that bad and they're going to come back and they're going to do something, you know you don't you don't see that after you know a guy wins a tournament or something just going nuts on the fact that the competition we got to get better and everything else. I went whoa, dude, this is this is serious stuff. So it, it's going to be fun. Again, we'll be all up watching and at two yeah. o'clock in the morning. I think it's my time right now. <laughs> I think that, I think that's right, and the pressure and the emotion is something that is uh, very watchable. Peter, who do you who do you think? And then Gary, um, who's got the most pressure on him for the American team? Obviously, Justin Thomas got picked. Um, he, he's got a good record at the Ryder Cup, not like Dustin Johnson's five and zero last at Whistling Straits, but but Justin Thomas had a great tournament. Um, uh, his last tournament he played in was a fifth. Um, Looks like he's rounding into form. Who do you think that on the Americans is going to be under the most pressure? Well, I think Justin Thomas obviously is is the the top of the list. I mean, not only just because of this week, but uh, he struggled of late. He's looking for <clears throat> answers, and and this is going to be a make or break point, in my opinion, for the rest of his career, or for at least the next couple of years of his career. If he goes to Rome, plays great. He's going to get rejuvenated, and we're going to see some great golf going forward out of Justin. If he goes there and lays an egg, then you know he could be deeper in trouble. But for me, um, the Ryder Cup has always come down to putting. When you, no matter how you slice it, rookies, veterans, young, old, the team that puts the best wins. And Europe has putted better than America. And quite frankly. Our number one player, Scotty Scheffler, it's well chronicled the difficulties he's had with the putter. And, and you've got Jordan Spieth, right, with his two and three, four footers. I don't think you're going to see those given in, in, in the matches. So uh, to me, it's going to be execution because ultimately all team competitions, baseball, basketball, football, they come down to individual execution, Right. Each each member of the team has to execute, and then the team can can play well. So when I look at the U.S. side, I have some question marks about their putting that that really bother me. On the European side, I've got some questions about the rookies and how they're going to handle the pressure. So we got to look and see see what that's going to be. So that for me is how it's going to pan out: putting on the U.S. side, pressure on the European side for the rookies. Yeah, it, it, you hit on it for me too. Um, I I think um, we're getting close to critical mass with with our top player in Scotty Scheffler, and it, as a team member, you know, you start piling on guys to play with Scotty to beat these guys and put them up in first and go win. But I got no confidence whatsoever in Scotty Scheffler making a five footer. I, I really don't. And as you know. The darkest of dark comes when the pressure's the most. And if you've got any, any fatal flaws in your golf game, this tournament, the ultimate tournament for pressure, will bring out every flaw that you have, whether it be emotional, physical, or whatever. And if you've got those guys at the top of our top of our team, the, the leaders and the good players, and they get a little iffy with the putter. Now you have to start doing all sorts of things with the combination of partners and so forth. And I, I'm, I'm Peter. I'm with you 100. percent I I don't have any trust whatsoever in a couple of our top players making putts when they have to right now. I don't. I mean, obviously that can change. But uh, Scotty's been bad for a year. Um, and now what do you do? You put him out as the number one team and say, okay, we're going to put so and so with Scotty. And uh, and we're going to go out and beat you guys to death, and you can't beat this team. And that doesn't 
Uh, I don't I don't know who our top guys are now, team wise, uh, to put together if 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 the situation stays the same or gets worse. And, and following through with that theme, Gary, as you very well know, in match play, um, the momentum switches are are astronomical at times, and almost invariably, I'm going to say nine out of ten times, the momentum switches occur on the green. You know, a, a guy hits a five uh, shot, great shot in there from 200 yards to five feet. He walks in there, misses the putt, boom, the air is let out of the bag, right? And he walked deflated to the next tee. Conversely, somebody hits it in there five feet and makes it, and drains it, and wins the hole with a birdie or an eagle. Now the momentum switches again. So that's why putting is so critical. Obviously, it's got to do with score. That's duh. But it's the momentum switches, the energy that that you can muster and maintain by putting well is phenomenal in a Ryder Cup. And you, you've got to live on energy, adrenaline, and execution. I think we saw that the last time Ryder Cup was played with some strikes. You remember, we were yep. making everything. They were just going yep. in from everywhere. And everybody, you know, caught the mojo. And everybody started doing it. And that's basically rare for, for our teams to, to putt that well as we did. Um, that week at uh, up at Whistling Straits, so it'll you know it's always going to be interesting. We can look at this and look at that. It should it should be a uh, it should be again a a great venue. Uh, hopefully the golf course holds up, and guys yeah. don't don't go nuts over the fact they hate it. Uh, All right, so what's your what's your score, Gary? And what's your winning team? I you know for for me. For me, everything is momentum. And the fact that they haven't won over there in 30 years kind of supersedes everything to me. Uh, so what about the, the hat you're wearing? Huh? What about the hat you're wearing? Well, it was a hat that was sitting right here, and I thought, oh, it was a flag. <laughs> I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> so you're going you're to put on a USA hat and pick Europe? I, I, like the, I like the other side of the money on this. I, I like to take the dog on their home field, but we don't win in 30 years just as – you know, looking at Billy's book, you know, I, I'm gonna I put it all together and I put my algorithm down and I I'm betting against uh not betting against momentum. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take the plus side of that and take take Europe to win this thing. So Gary's right, taking momentum 15, in Europe. 15 13. 15 13? Okay, predict the you, score I, there, Gary. Uh let's see. What uh, what's it take? 14 and a half to win? Is that it? 14, have 14, to, 14 for the U.S. to keep the cup. 14 and a half for Europe to win it. Okay, 15-13. Uh, Same as me. <laughs> Same score? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, I'll give you one it's more one more chance. Who's going to be – who's going to get the this, most I'm points? So I, I will say this. The, the, the most fun to, for me is not betting on whether Europe wins or U.S. wins. For me, it's betting on the individual matches. Because uh, then, mm. then you can see how players are playing, and and you can you can place your wagers on a on a given match, and and, and see how that turns out. Um, top point getters, boy, I tell what you, you what, uh, I'm going to go with Victor Hovland on the European team, and uh, boy, <laughs> in keeping with my tendency to stir the shit, I'm going to go with Brooks <laughs> Kepka. On the on the US. Oh, oh, Gary, who do you like? Who's your top point getters on each side? <sighs> you know, I, I'm going to take a look at one of these rookies they've got on Europe because we're not going to throw our main heat at those kids down there at the bottom. And if a guy gets playing got a European side, I like, I like, I like Aberg. The sweet, I think he is really, really, really good. And they're not going to throw the heat at him. They're going to throw the heat at, you know, the top three out of four guys that got over there, Rahm and, and Hovland and and, uh, and that top end. So they're going to they're going to throw some of the, the the lesser knowns, not the lesser knowns, but they're going to the, the the least of the top players. They're going to throw them at the bottom. And I, I a guy like Aberg, I think, come through and. You know, and make win a lot of points as a rookie, just because of of the team and the tail end of the American team playing playing him and 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 uh, Substracta and, and those kind of guys. So as, yeah, but it's going to be difficult, Gary, because this is blind pairings. 
right? This isn't like the President's Cup where you pick a side and, and, and go back and forth. It, it's you're gonna write down your 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 players and your and your matches and then you just put them out there. Yeah, so it's gonna it's gonna be hard to avoid certain players. Yeah, yeah. But I, I they have certain slots they know who's gonna be in there. They they know as they pick those what's what's gonna happen. So I, I don't know. I again who knows if the heartbeat gets really Gary, and what number one point getter for the US, Gary, who do you like? I'm I'm gonna go. I just think Justin Thomas has got something to prove. Really, really something to prove. And I, I just think that's gonna make him feister in hell. He is arguably the team leader, uh, the emotional leader of that team. And I think he's he's got to set the precedent uh, because everything on his side is negative. Everything from getting in it to his year he's played and everything else. So he's got a lot to prove. And we'll find out. We'll find out if that brings out the best or the worst of it. But I think right. it brings out the best. So Gary's got Europe and he's got Aberg and Justin Thomas. And Peter also has Europe and he's got Victor Hovland and Brooks Kepka. Coming up on Costas and McCord, Peter and Gary will play the 15th hole at Whisper Rock's upper course and share some great stories. Remember to send a video of your swing to CostasMcCord at gmail.com. And next in the show, Coach Costas will give you a great tip to help improve your game. So stick around. Don't go away. Costas and McCord off their rockers. We'll be right back. Costas and McCord Off Their Rockers is presented by Swing U. Check out the incredible Swing U app. It gives you great GPS course data from T to green and including green reading. And you know, even simple strokes gain features can help you improve your game. So go out and check on the app store or at swingu.com. It's a great app. It'll shave strokes off your game. Bono's Pit Barbecue, an authentic Southern Pit Barbecue experience you won't forget. At Bono's, you'll find a genuine down-home pit barbecue experience, the whole experience. Our entire menu is smoked and prepared in-house from our mouth-watering smoked meats to our delicious sides made from scratch. Our smoker is always smoking and everything to order, no shortcuts. With 20 locations across the country, from the Sunshine State of Florida to the Rocky Mountains, Bono's culture is unmistakable at each of our restaurants. We offer incredible opportunities for franchisees. To find out more, visit our website, bonosbarbecue.com slash franchise. And remember, if you don't have a pit, it ain't legit. Special thanks to our sponsor, CMC Design. For over 30 years, CMC Design is a golf company that specializes in custom golf head covers, event gifts, and promotional products. They're one of the largest designer suppliers of accessories to the PGA Tour and other top golf retailers, clubs, resorts, and courses. With CMC Design, the possibilities are limitless. They have the largest in-stock collection of golf head covers and accessories for direct-to-consumer sales, retail, event gifts, and green grass pro shops. And their talented in-house team of designers and graphic artists can bring an idea to reality, creating custom items for any business category. Golf, events and tournaments, corporate marketing, executive gifts, boutique retail, or souvenirs. To find out more, visit cmcdesign.com. That's cmcdesign.com. Visit our website, costasmccord.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or podcast and follow us on social media at Costas McCord Off Their Rockers. Now it's time for Coach Costas. Peter gives us some great tips to help our games. For my taste, holding the club, your grip, is crucially important to the consistency of your golf game. Now, not everybody should have the same grip. There's no one universal grip for everybody, but there is a grip for you, and you need to use it on a consistent basis. Unfortunately, I see way too many of my students who they get over the ball, and they start waggling, they start moving, and then before they go back, they re-grip it. And the grip that they have when they take the club back bears absolutely no resemblance to the grip they started with when they were waggling and re-gripping and re-gripping and re-gripping. 
you can never re-grip in a consistent manner, therefore you can never have a consistent grip, therefore you can never have a consistent swing. But there is a simple cure for all of those issues. Do not sole the club. Simply hold the club about a quarter of an inch above the ground, and at this point, you're going to realize if your grip's too tight, you can't control where the club head is. It's going to be moving all over the place. If it's too loose, it'll drop. And if you re-grip, it'll certainly drop to the ground. So simple drill for a big problem of re-gripping. Set up to the golf ball. Don't sole the club. Start your swing from there and let it go. Just learn to do that. Now, eventually, you can do it with all your clubs. Jack Nicklaus was famous for never soling his irons or his, or his woods. And it's one of the reasons that his grip was so consistent and his golf game, well, it speaks for itself. So just set up, take your grip, hold the club, quarter of an inch above the ground, start from there, and go. Don't sole it if you have a regripping problem. It'll go away. Stay tuned because Peter and Gary are going to play the 15th hole on the upper course at Whisper Rock, tell a great story, and get a little competition going. Remember, like, subscribe, and share at our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash at Costas McCord. And remember to send a video of your swing to Costas McCord at gmail.com. Costas and McCord off their rockers, presented by Swing U. We'll be right back. GPS, scorecard, stats, instruction. Join more than 6 million golfers who use and trust Swing U. Get accurate distances to greens and hazards. Store your rounds and scorecards and receive a handicap for life. Upgrade to get wind speed and elevation. Plays like distances, shot tracking, club recommendations, green reading maps, strokes gain stats, and personalized lessons and drills. Download Swing U and start owning your game today. Ono's Pit Barbecue, an authentic Southern Pit Barbecue experience you won't forget. At Bono's, you'll find a genuine down-home pit barbecue experience, the whole experience. Our entire menu is smoked and prepared in-house from our mouth-watering smoked meats to our delicious sides made from scratch. Our smoker is always smoking and everything to order, no shortcuts. With 20 locations across the country, from the Sunshine State of Florida to the Rocky Mountains, Bono's culture is unmistakable at each of our restaurants. We offer incredible opportunities for franchisees. To find out more, visit our website, bonosbarbecue.com slash franchise. And remember, if you don't have a pit, it ain't legit. Special thanks to our sponsor, CMC Design. Pro DMC Design is a golf company that specializes in custom golf head covers, event gifts, and promotional products. They're one of the largest designer suppliers of accessories to the PGA Tour and other top golf retailers, clubs, resorts, and courses. With CMC Design, the possibilities are limitless. They have the largest in-stock collection of golf head covers and accessories for direct-to-consumer sales, retail, event gifts, and green grass pro shops. And their talented in-house team of designers and graphic artists can bring an idea to reality, creating custom items for any business category, golf, events and tournaments, corporate marketing, executive gifts, boutique retail, or souvenirs. To find out more, visit cmcdesign.com. That's cmcdesign.com. Visit our website, costasmccord.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or podcast and follow us on social media at Costas McCord Off Their Rockers. Now let's get back to Costas and McCord Off Their Rockers with Peter and Gary. All right, Peter, here we go. Um, this is one, is one of the hardest holes in the back nine. Um, and this is this is this is one we call it we call it we call it the long the long swaro cactus yeah. long uh, just because any of those balls in that yes yeah, the balls yours? in that deal but it's not because of that cactus but if you turn around and look you can see a, a, a unique cactus back here and uh, that's 
epitomizes <laughs> epitomizes what you're gonna get on this hole. <laughs> you, you wish. <laughs> you wish. Oh, I wish my wife could look at that. Okay, here we go. All right, you're gonna get some ground distance on yeah, that. Yeah, it's just, it's knowing where the face is, Peter. So I've always told you, <laughs> where the face is in time and space. Oh. And to understand where the face is. Thank Whatever you, you do, I'm gonna do the opposite. Okay. Just because. Okay. So you don't care where the face is? I care where the face is, okay. but I assume that I know that. And I'm gonna go for speed. Well, I know you're gonna go for speed because you you didn't buy it, but you got one of those $900. Yeah. Nine hundred dollars shaft. Yeah. So it's supposed to hit a yard and a half. Well, it was thirty yards by you the last time I and used it. And you didn't. And you didn't pay a dime for that shaft. I know that. When's the last time you paid for anything golf? Well, the other day I paid for. I got a hat. So you actually went and bought a hat. Yeah, I was Ca on the way to the golf course. Forgot it. Cash or credit card? It was cash. Cash. It was Seventeen bucks. It's second swing, so everything pretty cheap in there. Was it a used hat? I, I don't know. I didn't work. <laughs> but you know, you just put them in the dishwasher. <laughs> what do you do? You put this yeah, in the dishwasher, yeah, yeah, and it comes out nice. Yeah. Do you have fun at second swing? Yeah. Yeah. Great time. In fact, when I went in there, I, <laughs> I can't believe you asked me. I get a phone call from them, okay? And they said, Mr. McCord, we got one of your tour bags in here. <laughs> I said, what? I said, somebody brought in a tour bag, and uh, the, we gave them cash for it. And I said, you're selling my tour bag. Oh, yeah. time out, time out. How much cash did they give that person for your I bag? don't know. Okay. I don't know. I but guarantee you it was less than the hat. You know why they called me? <laughs> they go through everything, right? There was a wedding ring in there. One of my wedding rings. You know, when you play, you just throw a wedding ring in there. They called me up very nice going, hey, by the way, uh, we have one of your tour bags. I go, okay, fine. We found one of your wedding rings in here. What? I go, so I go over and the bad news, it was from the How first, many wedding rings do you have? It was from the first marriage, okay? <laughs> so I went quietly. Yep. Any, any any conjecture of where, which way it's going, right or left? Yeah, right or? down the fucking fairway. Okay, okay. Okay, that's pretty good for you. Last hole, Get you're it. one down. I, 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 you know what? We've probably got 175 yards. Last hole, one down, I'm having flashbacks. What? I'm having flashbacks to to our, our dear friend, Maury Povich. Yeah. And he, we were on the lower course. Yeah. And and back when his handicap was, he couldn't quite shoot to his handicap. Right. And you affectionately called him $100 Maury. $100 Maury. Because it was always $100 Nassau. Yeah. And more times than not, he would lose. But he's gotten better now. So he's, yeah. and he's starting to win some matches, right? Really? So, oh yeah. So he's got you. Okay. 16th hole. Yeah. And you're two down. I'm two down to Maury Povich. You're two down to Maury Povich coming up to the 16th green. Okay. Right? And so, as is your want. This is going to end well. I know it as is. is. As is your want, yeah. you go to your 15th club. Uh-huh. Your mouth. <laughs> Just go like this. Right? Remember, now, he had he had a talk show, right? Yeah, I know, I know. And so, you start. You yeah. Get, you start. Maury. How the hell can you, how can you look at yourself in the morning in that mirror and just, and, and do the show that you're doing? I mean, this is, how, it's just. You're it, talking it, to aliens. It's just Pregnant awful. Aliens. It's just, I mean, it's, it's awful. It's, it was awful. And you go, awful. and you go, I, they could pay me I $5 million and I wouldn't do that show. <laughs> and Maury looks at you and he goes, neither would I. I would neither. i do it for $12 million. <laughs> What? Are you shitting me? And he closes you out on 16. 12 million. He couldn't have. There's no way Povich beat me. How far? Whose ball is who? That's mine. You got 172. Watch this, because this is the easiest shot in the world. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hooded down five iron, and I'm going to pitch a ball low in that left bunker over there. Okay? And it's going to go. Oh, you're going to pitch it toward the bunker, not yeah, in it? Not in it. No, okay. No. So you're going to play Lynx Golf. I'm going to play Lynx Golf here. OK? Yep. Here we go. Not too hard, just enough face on it. Watch this, my friend. Watch this. This is just brilliant. Literally brilliant. It, it, was, it was absolutely, absolutely 100%. It's in the back middle part of the green. Yeah. It's 100% of what I told you I was yeah. going to do. Right the and what that is, is that's called 
club face control <laughs> and trajectory and the power structure that involves everything together. And in my elderly age, I have all three. My good looks, charming, and everything else have gone, but I've still got that. Remember what I said? What? If you do something, I'm doing the opposite. So what are you gonna do, a high hook here? Yeah. With a big I'm... ridge, a false front there? What do you got, six? Gary, sit in the cart and shut up. God damn. They worked on Maury. <laughs> Can't wait to watch this. Hey, hey, hey! High five! High five! Good shot! What the Good hell? Good shot! Good shot! Come here! Finally! What are Jesus. these? What? You cold? No. These. This is a desert golf. Gets hot and dry. We're at about 98 today, probably. And so what you do? Skin cancer, which I've had plenty of. Yeah. And when it gets really hot, you just take these out and dip it in the water. And put it on, it's cool. Have you ever considered putting them in the uh, washing machine? No, no. <laughs> you, you want that aroma to find out. Sometimes you get lost in the desert and they can only find you through smell. smell. Yes. You, yes. Yeah, the javelinas yeah. too. Yes, yes. All right, let's go. All right, Peter, downhill. This thing is fast and it's hooking. This is a severe dog leg left hook putt. Control your distance. Control my distance. I'm gonna show you a new way to putt here, Peter. How many putters do you have in your bag? Uh, not enough. Now basically, well, I think this putting method is the best. I don't use it. But the first thing you do, if basically, here's the deal. If I took this ball and said to an unsuspecting person in the gallery, Roll this ball, throw it, would you? Oh, Tell yeah, they, they would do. stand like that. And 100% of 1 million people would go like that and throw it. Because I did this. Now, you see what you just did there? Yeah, I made just, it. You, you just. I made it. No, you just cheated. <laughs> it's well. You just cheated. You, you, so you that gave is, yourself. That is actually the way I'm going to try to putt this. And this was funny. We were playing at the 3M Championship, and I did an article in Golf Digest about face on putting and you know got the doctors and everything else how to do it well basically and, and the reason is number one you stand where you got binocular vision you look at it this way you don't look at it from a parallax view where you could tilt your head one way or another or if you have astigmatism you are screwed so the, I mean the simplest way to do this is you get behind it anybody got, you got to give me your ball would you okay so I'm gonna find my line. I bet you you don't do as good with a putting stroke. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but, so, all I'm doing now is I'm, I'm looking at the line, and I get here and I just move, I move my head over so my right eye is on the right side of the line and my left eye is on the left. This is pretty simple so far. And then I just keep this anchored here, just in my hand, and then I just throw it out that way. Okay. I mean, it's simple, here we go. I know you like this method too, by the way. I got my own story about this. Okay. And uh, both of us involve Sam, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here we go. I got my line. Come back, darling. All is forgiven. Yeah, I killed that one. The shaft's got a lot of flex in it. Back when I was spending a lot of time with Sam Sneed in, yep. in Delray Beach, Florida. We're in the Golf and Digest we were doing schools. the Golf Digest yep. schools. And then we would play a lot at Pine Tree, which was his home club there. Yep. And so Sam talks me into side saddle putting okay which remember he and Bob Duden yes they went croquet and then yes. when they then when they outlawed croquet by saying you couldn't straddle the line yes. Sam went like this and he and he used his regular his bullseye putter, putter yes. his regular putter yeah. and he, he would get down kick his hips in here like this kick yep. his knees in get right down here and off he'd go yeah right mm -hmm. so we're out there one day and he goes son come on I gotta teach you how to putt I, I got to teach you. You can be really good at this. So this was like somewhere around April, something like that. And I go April, May, June, July, August. I don't remember whether this, the Tallahassee Open was in September or October, but I got a spot in the Tallahassee Open. I was there. Remember? I have putted now since April. Okay. And the only way Sam would let me putt was like this. Okay. Right here. You are not about to go to a okay. pro tour. So that, now, that. now I go. All I remember is the first hole. I hit driver somewhere on there. I hit an iron about 10, 12 feet from the hole. 
and I go, I go, okay. Ten, twelve feet from the hole, I go like this. I look around at the gallery. They're all giggling. I go like this again, and I go, no <laughs> chance. And I and I walked up and I hit my first putt conventional in five months. I had no you know chance. What? And what you said right there is the exact thing I experienced. I went to the putting green on a Wednesday in the Wednesday Pro-Am, yeah. and I'm sitting there, and I'm putting like this, and you hear the people murmuring and stuff, and you look up, and all the tour players are looking yeah, at you. Everybody's looking at you. Finally, Crenshaw comes over, and he goes, what are you doing? I said, oh, face on putting. I'm like, what? I said, by the way, you're here? I said, here. And I went, here, Ben, I, just on this 30-footer, show me, I want to see your roll. It, in your right arm motion, how you how you use it. So he gets up and he goes, he goes like that, and I go, that's exactly what I'm doing. And he walked off mumbling. <laughs> da, 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 da. But you can't argue with the fact of the basic criteria of the whole thing. No, and the way guys are putting these days, different styles, saw grip, yeah. claw grip, yeah, whatever. Think the stigma that was back in the 80s yeah. is no longer available. Yeah. See? So now Did you I'm see gonna, the roll on this one? So I'm going to give you. Uh, well, I'm, this is the one I threw in. I, yeah. I, I threw the other one a foot. Give so it that's back. That's an answer all my questions. Give it back because I'm going to give the people at home a lesson. Okay. When you got a big break and putt like this, yep. so you, you you don't read it from there yep. all the way. So yep. I, I got to find I got to find the fall line. Yep. Right. So the fall line's right about here where the ball's going to roll straight down to the hole, right? Yep. Yep. So my ball has to be somewhere around there when it's four feet from the hole. And kind of dying, because it's straight down the Gravity road. is, is going to take over. So now i got to get about here and decide, all right, where do I have to go from here to get to there? So I break it into thirds. So I'm going to go, hmm, i got to be up here so that I, if I hit it, it'll come down that fall line. Mm -hmm. So that now when I come back here, I can see my I can see my starting direction, right? Yep. So. I'll let you. I'm going to go just inside of this yeah, one. Go inside of that one. And let's see if you get it out to that one. Oh. You Pretty have good. got to be kidding me. Oh, stop it. That's a 40-footer <laughs> with a 10-foot break. Mine good? So that's it. Break it up into threes. Yours is good. Ha! Hey, listen. We're glad you're enjoying the show. We're getting a lot of comments. Uh, usually I get bad comments, but uh, we're actually getting <laughs> some good comments uh, for our, our show, Costas McCord, Off Their Rockers. Uh, we're having a great time doing this. Uh, we did television for a long time. We had to be there and there and over here doing this. And this is just whatever you want. And it's, it is absolutely the greatest. We're having a ball, trying to teach, trying to have some fun, Peter, and, and, and uh, give us something to do at our age. This is going to evolve yep. because we don't like stale. No. We got fired for stale. Supposedly. So we're not going to keep this stale. We're going to do more instructional stuff, more stories. Um, we're going to do lots of things. So if you have swings that you want to have analyzed, Send them in. We'll pick some out. I will try to help you as best I can with my swing knowledge. He will try to berate you as best he can with his typical form of, of, of is beratement uh, a word? No, it is now. Okay. You said it. Yes, yeah, it is okay. said now. And you know, we need for you to subscribe. Just go ahead and hit that button, Gary. Yeah. Watch this. Face on. Boom, boom. That button right there. Thanks so much for watching today's show. Uh, Ryder Cup picks from the guys who both picked Team Europe. I'm going with the United States. I don't know, but we'll see if we can break that 30-year drought. Thanks again to our sponsors, Swing You and the Swing You app, Foresight Sports and their Sim in a Box and Launch Monitors, CMC Design and all their great head covers and custom gifts and things for golfers, and also to Bono's Barbecue with some fantastic mouth-watering barbecue. For more information on Bono's, check the website for franchising or go to a Bono's in your area and enjoy it. We appreciate your comments. We appreciate your views. Please share it with your friends and we'll be back with you with another episode very soon of Costas and McCord 
off their rockers. <laughs>